Hello, everybody here on Comic Pop Returns. I am Sal. And I'm Divinity. And welcome to Off the Rack, the comic book review show where we take the books from the past week, recap them, review them, tell you our thoughts about them, and then give you recommendations for comics that are coming out this week we think that you should grab. And that includes Tuesdays and Wednesdays, thanks to DC's chicanery when it comes to distribution. Uh, so, yeah, let's jump into it. Before we do, of course, uh, I also want to say thank you all for being here. Secondly, uh, if you want to uh, sponsor this episode, there's two ways you can do so. The first of which is to subscribe. If you want to help us out, subscribe to this channel. Subscribe over on youtube.com slash comic pop. Subscriptions help us in a big bad way. Also, if you would give this video a like, that would help us out as well. If you are looking for a way to do so and you don't want to waste any time, zero barrier to entry. See that pinned comment in the chat right now? That's the link. Just click it and you'll be subscribed. No big deal. No problem. No pressure. Cost you nothing. And it won't it won't bombard your subscriptions feed. I promise you, YouTube will see to that. Also, of course, if you want to help us out, you can do uh, super chats. And those questions will be read here on the show. We will read them. We'll probably go off on tangents about them. And then uh, that proceed will go at least, I don't know, 80% or something like that. God knows. Probably more like 40. Uh, goes towards the infrastructure that allows us to continue to buy more trades so that we can do more shows like back issues and off the rack and the good, the bad, and the ugly and whatnot. Tiffany was just uh, concerned about the trade situation because I was looking at our LibIB, which if you're not sure what that is, it's a online library of everything that we have here in the studio, which by the way is not terribly complete because it doesn't catalog books that don't have barcodes or that have barcodes that are older than 30 years. Either way, we have 1,800 trade paperbacks in the library right now. And Tiffany was like, is that too many? And I'm like, no, why? It's never too many. You can never have too many comics. It might be too many. No, because we have a library. The point of having the library, and this is why I like having over 17 long boxes here in the studio, is that if you need something, if you want to check on a resource, sometimes the library is preferable to the internet. Sometimes having it is more important. Are, are, are we done with the humble brag part of the show? I'm just saying that it's important to have those things. Okay. I think they're important. Okay. Uh, so let's jump into some books. <laughs> uh, but before we do, uh, you know what? I'll read those super chats in a minute. Before oh. we do, let's do a review. Let's just jump into a review. Uh, I am going to share my review with you. Oh, and it's going to be such a review. Here it comes. Uh, it's oh. Robin number five from Joshua Williamson and Gleb Melenkov. Uh, this is, of course, Joshua Williamson's magnum opus regarding Damian Wayne and his Mortal Kombat island fight, which it is unabashedly so. It's just Mortal Kombat. It's just, it's just Mortal Kombat. No complaints there, by the way. But Who it, the hell doesn't want Mortal Kombat? Well, there's like 26 of those things. Yeah, but it's not like there's a realm that's going to take over. Well, yeah, but it's more like... If Shao Kahn yeah. or the other guy, Shang Tsung. Yeah. Yeah. If, if either one of them had like a cult or a league of assassins around them. Right. You know, it's that kind of thing. Anyway, yeah. th this, this issue in particular focuses on all the Robins. All of them. All of the Robins. All, all of them. Yep. Damien left the island and, uh, the Robins all are chasing after him mm -hmm. to try and get him to not be on a death island. Okay. And uh, the Robins are, of course, led by Dick Grayson. And we get... He's doing a lot lately. He is, he's very busy, but uh, in a good way. Not in a, like... He's a busy guy. Not, not in a headshot kind of way. But Josh Williamson does pants Tom King in this. Damien gives him a little dig, calls him Rick. Ha-ha! <laughs> Oh. nice uh, nice pull but yeah. honestly this is a really fun issue you see the you see damien's opinions and interactions with all the robins okay including stephanie brown right and we see uh, uh red hood disarmed in a most unexpected way of course we see the strongest interaction between uh dick and damien and what they meant to each other because of course while batman was gone damien was his robin right so there is something there uh, Damien gives is given a present by uh, by by Grayson in the form of a uh, totemic device that represents a lot and connects him to the loss he felt because of uh, Alfred it, in the form of a dog because he's like listen I'm all about dogs now I can't take care of this thing right, right take Bitewing to the island no here's no. a responsibility yeah he will go the way of crypto and we can't have that <gasps> but uh, Robin number five I like it it's fun art's good story's fun it this is one of those things I feel bad because I like books that are just kind of like fun mm -hmm. and i'm worried because these kinds of books tend to end up on people's cutting floor because if they need to 
scale back or save money they they tend to mm-hmm. to drop the the less dis, the less indispensable books yeah I, I guess i guess it's because it's just a, it is a fun story that you'll enjoy reading probably in the future but it's a story that doesn't necessarily have any sort of ramifications on the dc world as a whole no. and if that's really what you're looking for it's just like those or if you're just looking for your bang for your buck, you're like, I need to know what's going to happen next. I need to be part of the big yeah. thing, yeah. which I think sucks. And it's one of those things where it's like, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta promote, like, listen, Infinite Frontier, mm-hmm. you know, Death Metals, all the major events, mm-hmm. they don't need your help. You know, they're going to be sold no matter what. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you all get together and don't buy them in such a way that they, they never reference them again. I, I regard uh, Empire or Heroes Reborn. People were just so fed up and sick of them that those just went away. Uh, excuse me. They did reference that in title. Yes. Yes, they did. <laughs> but you won't be seeing that again outside of the one print run they're going to get. And that's it. Probably. Like Heroes Were Born happened. Trade came out immediately. It's a, it's a very expensive trade. You could, you, by the way, wait. You can wait on that trade. You can trade wait on that trade because I promise you that Heroes Were Born book, that'll be in the buck bins at cons within a month or two. I spent top dollar because I needed to have it right now because I'm an idiot. I'm, I'm learning a lot. Well, I want, <laughs> I need to be on my finger must be at least, if not on the pulse, it must be adjacent to the pulse of oh. what's happening Okay. because I know a lot of people skip heroes are born. I think people right. like to see that, especially if they like to see some interaction on a couch talking about it, maybe with derision. We have a couch. I agree. That's and derision. Oh, so you see, you figured it out. You put it together. I'm you're a robin I'm now. A regular batman over there you go here. yeah so you didn't say what the totemic item was and i get you don't i don't want to give it away don't give it away i'm just going it's not to... a dog okay i'm going to assume it's like a broom it's not a broom because oh, alfred right? yeah <laughs> don't, don't sweep your past under the rug <laughs> anyway robin number five it's good check it out it's fine. is it money no what because nightwing has all of alfred's money now not anymore well not anymore <laughs> <laughs> but yeah he still has it he still has it's it just, but you, you know, know he's allocating he's giving it away he's allocating funds brian rollins reread spider-man life story for the mm-hmm. annual this week and it's still great no matter how many times i read it i'm enjoying fantastic four life story as well i dropped off life story for fantastic four i need to pick it up again uh because i enjoyed the first issue and i just didn't read the rest and i need to go back and read them um but yes life story from chip Zdarsky is incredible and there was an annual that came out it's not really an, i mean it is an annual because it's a little longer but like the reality is it's just more then that's hey there's nothing wrong with that i guess no, sometimes there is and sometimes there isn't that's right and when it comes to life story more is always better and isn't it nice to like you know I, i'm not oh well to check in but also like it's it's nice to have stories like this peppered in with like the weekly monthly books where it's like this is kind of more or less an evergreen story yes you can read it, it anytime yeah it's just something to just you know enjoy for what it is it doesn't really like necessarily shift up the zeitgeist no spider-man it's just something you can enjoy that's right that's right so yeah i'll talk more about that later okay but uh dan v 900 i know it's not being read but iron man is in the centurion armor in fantastic four life story number three it's very good but the annual by zarski was great good to hear and i agree with you uh, at least as far as life story annual being great. Mm-hmm. He also goes on to say, Tiffany, what did you think of what if so far? The show? Yeah, the show. Um, You know what? I liked the first episode. And I liked the second episode quite a bit mm-hmm. Um, for numerous reasons. Uh, it, you know, it, it was just it's nice to hear a voice from the past. Yes. That you like, you know what I mean? Like there, there's, there's something about that. That's emotionally charged. Um, I also just enjoyed that episode. The third episode was fine. Yeah. I felt the same way. The third uh, episode was okay. It was, I, it was fine. I wasn't like, you know, Oh, terrible, whatever. But like, it was just okay. We, we, we rewatched the first episode with a, a, an audience we because we had some friends over who hadn't yeah. checked it in. And I was like, we could, I could we, I've seen, I think episode one, three times now. Yeah. And, I like it. I still enjoy I it. Did, you know, it's funny. I this time around, I actually, um, I noted that you pointed at the Tommy Lee Jones did get shot. I guess, and I was like, oh, yeah. yeah, there it goes. But I actually watched more of the animations. Yes. This time around, and I really liked it. Yeah, I like it too. Yeah, I like it too. I didn't care for it much. Like I noticed some flaws in episode two and three. Like in episode two, I noticed that the mouth matching didn't work quite as well, mm. which. I don't know what that's due to. I was, I guess, I was thinking more or less the oh yeah background no, just the decisions, and the, like, the and choices, the actual like some of the um 
like effects yes like the explosions smoke and, and stuff smoke, like that yeah. like and how it's like clearly it is cg but they're skinning it like the background illustrations which yeah. is cool like i, I agree anyway, go ahead. no it's a good look um, uh yeah but episode three was the weakest of the three but that's not to say that episode three sucked in any way i just i enjoyed no, it but it was just, just kind of like it was like i i don't know like I know what they're doing here and it's going to be so weird when they get to the end of this, but it's all been very tied into the MCU. And again, it's a smart move on their part from the perspective of getting the show out there and getting people to watch it yep. because they know there is like a large number of individuals who only know these characters because of the MCU. And so they can get on board for this. Yeah. Now they're going to hit a point though. Yeah. <laughs> where they're going to run out of MCU stories to tell. Yep. They're going to tell I mean, their own not stories. Not really because it's a what if, but if they are touting Marvel zombies. Yes. That's going to come out of nowhere. Yes, it is. For a lot of these people. I think that's going to be great, though. I do, too. Because it's zombies. I do people too. are going to so really like, freak out. I had to keep that in the back of my mind that it's like, you know what? We're going to do some of the MCU stuff because this is really just to get folk in to watch it, to get yes. them interested in the concept so that maybe later on in like a season two, we'll see more what-if stories that we know that yeah. maybe are, you know, just you know either individual issues or ones that are just more well known or like just concepts from comics totally but people might be more on board for it because now they're used to the show they're exactly the format that's what i'm kind of hopeful for yeah we've all been hoping that the movies would get people into comics maybe this show could be that gateway i don't know if they're gonna get them into comics i just i'm like, always hopeful that that'll be uh, well of course of course um i also like noted this time because i remember you like i remember hearing um on another show that you were on that folk had noted how "Quote unquote rosy." Yes, Peggy's cheeks were. Yes, that let was me, a that was a weird uh, me, complaint, but a lot of people had. Let me tell you something right now. Let, let me channel my inner Rob here for. Oh a sure, minute. yeah. <laughs> let me let, let me tell you something. Um, that was the fashion for women at that time. Right. That's called rouge. That's not even <laughs> blush. That's called rouge. Yeah. That's something they just smear on their cheeks. Of and, the Mulan variety. No no but that's why because that was in vogue yes and the fact is like is it ridiculous to think someone who is a hero or like in a war would have like makeup on sure but you just spend that disbelief every time you watch any movie ever uh, right exactly <laughs> exactly like, whatever it's okay yeah oh right <laughs> uh so uh ryan craig had a question he said had the tick been here the whole time and uh if you're talking about that tick right there yeah he's been here for most of the time if not the whole time uh and i'm I, i'm 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 glad you noticed i think a few people may have noticed but i appreciate you calling out to him because spoon he also talks by the way that's my talking tick he came from uh, the uh, the episode that we did of the tick if you haven't watched that episode go to youtube.com slash comic pop and check out our tick spectacular yeah thank you for doing that i <laughs> i realized that we were you we were relying on wi-fi and i'm like oh no before there's a problem let's get ahead of it yes so thank you that's Tiffany. why i rolled away with such great haste that's right because i was like oh no what i've said about rouge exactly no, um. <laughs> exactly no i've said it i'm leaving no, i'm out my dropped yeah Ugh, i have to hit it hard. yeah ty vachier says i can't watch now but i will watch later on keep up the great video well thank you very well, much you, you so too much. And, and welcome to the playback yeah 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 how, how was your day uh, so yeah, what do you what do you want to talk about? What what's a book that you read? Um, I should turn around when I'm speaking. I read Amazing Fantasy number two this week. You by, did, uh, Kari Andrews, written and drawn, written and arted. Yeah, which is what my brain wanted me to say. I'm glad you didn't. Oh, I did eventually, but I, I got to say it with a level of control. Um, this is a science fiction fantasy book and honestly part of it definitely reads like that yeah like it's got some like a little over the top romance moments Good. here and there like it's it very much has like this style of cover that's how it feels on the inside um the concept here being that like captain america peter parker and I don't know why I went with his superhero name, his real name. Yeah. And then I was going to go Black Widow. So Cap, Spider-Man, and Black Widow have all seemingly died right. and woken up in this amazing fantasy. Um, all I'm going to guess they're all in the same area, but they haven't run into one another yet, but cool. all handling their own individual stories. In the last issue, Peter uh, was brought to a village where he found that Uncle Ben was there. Yes, I remember that. Now, Uncle Ben is acting in this a little out of character, which is making me a little like, uh oh yeah what's happening mm -hmm. is this bad writing or is this plot mm. i don't know i don't know either uh i i i should say something about kari andrews really quick uh sure. and that is that i really dismissed him because i think he wrote and drew spider-man rain which i was like the least favorite like that's I, I i when it came out people were like finally and i was like this is the worst thing i've ever seen and uh, i feel really bad because like 
I know I've seen Kari Andrews work and I know his work very well and I I really enjoy it for the most part. Yeah, but I was very pu- but I've never really championed it. I've only been like very critical of that one thing that I think shouldn't exist. Right. right and it's right, like right. I guess that's kind of like rough because yeah. it's like you know hey you're a consummate creator and you've done a lot of great stuff and the only thing I've publicly talked about is a book that you did that everyone likes that I think shouldn't like literally shouldn't exist and so. I just want to say I dig his work and I think this is awesome that he's getting a chance to do this because it highlights some of his real strengths. I I honestly think it's just like, there's something up with this location. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. Peter, no, and also don't forget, Peter's a little younger in this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah, he dies like younger. Yeah, much than younger. he would be in this. Yeah, universe. which is so funny because there's that like super gorgeous like queen or like a leader of these like bird hawk people kind of thing. Sure. Um, and like he's like, he's like, all right, so I died, but every day I get to wake up and look at this person. and try to impress this this woman. So like his uncle's trying to fish. Peter ends up like webbing the fish. Okay. He turns around. She has a spear full of gigantic fish. I just love that. Yeah. And he's got this little tiny one. Mm-hmm. And she's like, we throw the little ones back. <laughs> he's like, um, okay. That's um, awesome. However, what I noted about um, Uncle Ben in this is that like, you know, essentially it's like, they're like, is it purgatory? Is it, I don't, like, I don't understand. Like, right, are, are, are we, are we being heroes? punished? For, like what we done? Yeah. And he's like, but you know like, uncle ben what'd you do yeah and he's like i didn't teach you to be a man and i'm like what oh okay that's kind of strange but like he's like yeah but like you know it was that like act or like me not helping you or whatever that made me like a hero and he's like yeah I, like made you dress up like a lunatic and like run around yeah i failed <laughs> and i'm like wow damn and he misses may He's like, I, I, he's like, I can never hold her again. Oh, and I was like, oh, okay. That's, you're a sad man. Yeah. You're a chunky, sad round friend. Right. Well, we've never really, I mean, we've seen it a thousand times, but like in reality, we've never actually gotten more than a few panels of uncle Ben alive. I know. I know. Outside of retcons and flashbacks. Yeah. So he's just, he's just sad. Um, overall, like I'm digging this fantasy world that they're uh crafting but like we were promised sci-fi fantasy and don't worry that last page reveal it brings in the sci-fi element here. great there's also a a, a be cloaked be hooded figure mm-hmm. um who seems to be a commonplace thread mm. throughout some of these adventures and some of the like maybe more antagonist side of it okay also i can't tell if this is a tiny storm or not right or if it's like a and female right, moon knight well the only reason i say that is because it says next issue the storm is coming yeah then that's storm that's, but that's like, x baby's storm like maybe just itty bitty yeah so this is such a out there kind of book it's very much in my wheelhouse though it's not necessarily a 1602 which is like an alternate spelling yes. of the marvel universe but it still makes me think of it sure because it's essentially like taking heroes especially when you take steve rogers i of course i'm going to make like oh yeah comparisons to 1602. yeah um so if you do like have a flair for uh, the sci-fi fantasy genre or just like stories where characters are thrust into a world they're unfamiliar with but still act as though themselves yeah you might dig this um it's cool because black widow gets thrust into a story that i'm like yeah all right that's pretty apropos your standard fantasy story like you know, they're like, oh, it's a, it's a, like the most beautiful woman ever entered this kingdom. So therefore that must be a sign that I should marry her. And like, that's like, my people will get behind that and stop warring with one another. Oh. If I just do that. And she's like, right on. So they dress her up and she looks like stunningly gorgeous. And she like runs away from that proposal. Cause she's like, that's weird. Yeah. Inevitably she ends up like, there was like an assassination attempt on this dude. And so she like kicks ass and takes names. And she's like, now I feel comfortable in this dress. Right. I'm like, all right, yeah, like still acting within the character, but in this world. That's fine. It's also only five issues. Yeah. So it's a it's a mini series. So it's like not like you're like I'm in for the long haul. Yeah, not a big you're, commitment. You're in for five issues. So cool. I recommend it. I really like it, and the covers are super fun. They are. They are poster worthy. Mm-hmm. Denial. Unsure how I feel about the Amazing Spider-Man revelation. Not bothered by it. Makes sense why the character would do that this time around. He's getting something tangible. Leads to countless misery and tragedy. I agree. Uh, we'll get into Spider-Man. I promise. It's the namesake of this episode. Uh, Jam Call X says if you've read Amazon's attacks and Superman at its end but you ever read jla act of god tldr everyone should be should be uh 
losing those dumb powers and get real heroes like Batman. Yes, I have Red Act of God. We have at least two copies of it somewhere. And one day we'll maybe cover it. I don't know. Perhaps. Perhaps. I am. Uh, I will say like, you know, I I, I picked those books uh, um, at Earth's End and Amazon's Attacks. Not only were both of those mailed to us from the population over the last like six years, but um, they are. Uh, they were silly and weird looking and I, I was excited to cover them because they're just so bizarre. Mm -hmm. uh, but I am not excited to have like constant comparisons to other YouTubers who have covered the story in the past. I don't watch their channel. I don't know anything about them. And so while I do appreciate that, like there is some crossover and I know every, who doesn't love a good crossover. I know I do, but uh, they don't know me. I don't know them. They're never going to work with me. And don't you know, I promise you're going to get a very different experience. If you watch back issues are, versus their video from 12 years ago, <laughs> there are no actual ideas out there that anyone has on their own. That's true. It's only from getting it from someone else. That's fair. Apparently. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. It is. It's, it, it's and not, I appreciate it's not the, that you have all these trades and it's just something you have interest in. No. Or you think will become a good episode based on the like personalities of the individuals you work that's with. Right, that's no. right. No, no, no. It's, be it's because yeah, of it's something be else that you never saw. Yeah, it's because I randomly discovered <laughs> Linkara. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Bailey. Don't uh, at us. <laughs> Bailey Tollison says, I picked up Life Story Annual today and it felt like that ending came out of nowhere. Still cool though. Thoughts? Keep up the great work? Well, why not? I'll talk about Spider-Man Life Story. Let's do it. Annual number one from Chip Zdarsky with art by Mark Bagley. It will be in the hardcover edition of this book. Uh, so don't you worry if you were, uh, unless you well, bought the trade. That's actually smart. Yeah. Well, I mean, like it's smart to like put them together, but yeah, if you have the trade. Exactly. Yeah, but uh, this story mm -hmm. is, uh, by the way, the cover is done by Chip Zdarsky himself yeah. uh but uh yeah this was just a addendum you don't need it to enjoy any of life story it only enhances a character that didn't really play much of a role in the life story series uh, and that's J. Jonah Jameson. And it's one of Chip Zdarsky's favorite Spider-Man characters. And he was happy to do it. And this is one of those books that I want to celebrate because it's it's one of those books that like they don't let you do. And if you got the clout like Zdarsky has earned, you get to do them sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it's a book where no, no, bar barely any punches are thrown. And it's just talking. Okay. And I love those. That's my, I'm a new Avengers fan. I love a bunch of colorful characters sitting in a room talking to each other. And you while do. Life Story Annual Number One is not a bunch of colorful characters, it's actually just J. Jonah Jameson being sad for like most of the book. Uh, but it's J. Jonah Jameson. And he, of course, created the, the Scorpion and the Spider Slayer robots. And in this book, he is arrested for his crimes and he goes to jail and he bumps elbows with Norman Osborn, who was, of course, arrested earlier in his life story. And so Norman and Jonah are like cellmates or at the very least prison mates. And they end up talking to each other. And Jonah's writing his manifesto and he's full of hate and anger. And it's just it's just so juicy of, of drama and character study. Mm -hmm. And it's just it's about anger and resentment and age and it's like that kind of thing where i can imagine if you were 15 and you read this you'd be like what a bit what a boring unrelevant issue well, and maybe no like absolutely because it's not i i don't think that it would apply to the sensibilities of somebody who isn't like in their like 20s 30s and up okay because it's just you need to have a little i think i think you need a little bit of world, world weariness to kind of get the message of what james jonah jameson is up to in this mm, okay but uh, but it's 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 a solid issue. It's a uh, it's beautiful, and it is a worthy addition to the life story saga. You know, there's a moment in life story. I won't give it away in case you haven't read it. Which, by the way, you absolutely should. Uh, but <laughs> um, where like things culminate and coalesce in such a beautiful way, where it's like like in the 80s. You know, he wants to talk about like the Craven's Last Hunt and the symbiote, and he, he does all these things. And then he and then he works this magic of putting it all together in a way that you're like, I've never seen that before. Mm -hmm. I totally should have expected that and seen it coming. And it's a completely earned moment. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens in this too. Uh, and so, you know, it's just, oh, gee whiz, it's written by the same freaking genius who knows what he's doing. So how nice. But yeah, so Life Story Annual Number One, I highly recommend it. But of course, I highly recommended the entire series before, so it shouldn't be that much of a surprise. There you go. Uh, the Nerdy Delinquent says, hey, Tiffany. Hi. Have you checked out Yu Yu Hakusho, Hakusho and Hunter x Hunter? They are hugely popular shonen written by Togashi, the H, the his band of Naoko. The husband. The husband of, of Naoko, Naoko Takeuchi, the woman who made 
They're like a powerhouse. Oh, the, the Sailor they're Moon? Po- they're a power couple. Yes. In the anime. The, and manga a manga the couple, you might say. Well, because you, you Hakusho, you, you Hakusho, I actually know from manga or yeah. from anime more than I know from manga. I've never Fair. actually read the manga. I've, I've seen some of the anime and Hunter x Hunter, I'm not super familiar with. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed me some Yu Yu Hakusho. It's, it's a, get this, it's a bunch of dudes with powers who were very distinctly uh, color blocked suits. Ah. Yeah, I could see that. <laughs> anyway. I could see uh what's her name? <laughs> Naoko? Yeah, Naoko being like, you should try it. You should make a couple of a couple of color coded I, I think they I think you should they should try that. I bet I a bunch of people would like it. Had done that prior to. I feel so bad for her because I remember when she like I remember hearing like when I was a kid, mm. I remember hearing a rumor, maybe you can confirm this or not, I that uh know. she wanted to end Sailor Moon and she got like the, the the munatics like basically like they turned feral and sent her like you know dead things in the mail they were like if you end sailor moon I, we're going to end you i don't i can't confirm or deny that that happened i didn't do that obviously, no, obviously. um but <laughs> you I, were a very small I, child yeah i could see that right listen i love sailor moon mm-hmm. <laughs> What I here's what I love about Sailor Moon. Yeah. Here's here's Tiffany's show. Here's what I love about Sailor Moon. Yeah. It continues to transcend generations. Right. And I know this only because yeah, it still I'm, has I'm, ability I'm today. part of the subreddit for Sailor Moon, and like it really like makes me delighted to see the variety of like age range and like people and everyone's just excited to be yeah. there and everyone's just excited to have this i'm not saying the fandom doesn't have its own i'm sure toxicity someplace here or I'm there sure. right but like there's something about that yes that like it just warms my heart that it's just every every scout is someone's favorite right you know every like every single there's no one answer to like that question right what's your favorite, your favorite scout they're everyone everyone is someone's favorite yes that's right not everyone hates mercury like i did i didn't hate her i was just like I have grown. I was like boring. I have grown to have a real respect for her. Yeah, no kidding. Because like you and she are are practically the same kind of student. You're both like excellent students. Uh, no, excuse me. She's a real student. I am a cram student, and not the way she is. Like I'm like the night before. I'm like memorize all no, of that's it. That's true, but you do. I learn nothing, but well, I got the grade. <laughs> yeah, well, that's there you go. You need to give me one of them, one of them discs. Yeah, yeah. One of them, one of them monster discs. <laughs> Uh, Radium Theater Production says Tynan's Batman Swan Song Fear State. That's a big event. Is yes. starting. Uh, I know Sal hasn't enjoyed the run, but please read and review it. Tiffany recommend continue. I would recommend continuing Wonder Woman. Seven 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 was a female Justice League, and Seven Seven Eight was Fifth Dimension. It's fun. You I read Seven Seven Seven. In fact, you and reviewed that was, it. That was the one I, re- I did like, read. That one. Done. that was the one that kicked me off of it. And not like and like I appre- I, I appreciate that. Uh, I think it's Earth Eleven. Yeah, I don't remember that one because Aqua Woman is on that team from. With the dark multiverse? No, the um future like t- uh Williamson's thing right now. Oh, in uh Infinite Frontier. Thank you. There's just too many things that have sounds that my brain desperately want to put together. Yeah, um okay. but my issue is just that it's like it's it's the same thing. It's like, oh, it's a thing that's gonna destroy everything unless she stops it. And that's that's what actually drove me off of the book. Yawn. It's, and that's why I liked her being in Valhalla because it was like it, sure, it was a thing that was gonna end that like arena like valhalla and you know right but we would never notice but that is what is meant to happen there ragnarok is meant to happen and so like it was very fitting to tell that type of story there i was just like kind of turned off by like yet another world ending event with wonder woman in it yeah Yeah. so we'll see i might grab the trade later on to to finish up the rest of the arc but for right now i'm just kind of like taking a breather from wonder woman and her world ending event uh will am golden has an adorable uh sticker of a mm-hmm. Shiva mm-hmm. and Axe has Thank one you. as well. Thank you very much, Axe. Thank you. Uh, Alden Tolbert says, You guys are cool for the real comic guys. One day, either I meet you guys on conventions or I send you my comic when it's finished. P.S. I read more comics and stop watching MCU and DCU. Let you know. Uh, thank you very much for Thanks digging great. us. I appreciate thank it. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, hopefully we'll uh, we'll catch you at a convention when yeah, it's safe. And good to do luck so. with your comic book project. Yes, exactly. Because it's always uh, an uphill battle, but I'm sure that, you know, it's rewarding as well. I mean, yeah, it is. It is, you know. Um, so I uh, I read uh, Detective Comics number 1042 from uh, Mariko Tamaki, this time with art by Victor Bogdanovic. 
Uh, Woo! I, I remember being like, what? It's over? But it's not. This is the last issue. It's funny because like it was, you know, part two of whatever or something. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. But uh, yeah, it, this I will talk about the feeling for this book because it really doesn't matter what happens. But, you know, Batman eventually wins and they fight some stupid character that nobody mm. cares about like actually two characters i don't give a shit about but uh the more important thing isn't you know it sounds like i'm i'm down on this issue and i'm not actually it it had this feeling because of things that happen like you know there's this disease that isn't really a disease it's more like a weaponized virus that's being used by this guy named vile who you know is yeah and whatever it, the point is batman yeah, I, gets infected in my head it's spelled i'm like is it v-i-a-l or v-i-l-e no v-i-l-e because it could be vile v-i-a-l if mm -hmm. it's a if it's, it's yeah it's a disease it, right uh -huh. but no it's it's vile okay but uh yeah the the feeling is what i get from this not only that but also some great art uh and you know not just well, because i know victor but yeah. also because like uh batman literally gets infected with this like you know this this lovecraftian disease and like he he becomes a bat thulu like he gets like like a, he's like davy jones yes he's like davy jones Chad squid <laughs> And uh, and it looks dope as hell. And of course, uh, it's Vic. Listen, and, yeah, and it would look even cooler. I, I loved it when it was in color, and they did a nice job. But uh, I think Jordy Belair did the colors. I don't remember. But uh, I I loved it in black and white. And I kind of wish this issue had like a black and white variant. He has that image out there. And, he like, does. He's and been you pushing should, that image. I think he. I think I saw it. That's why the only reason I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about is I saw it on his Twitter. So you should go check that out if totally. you are a fan of just solid art mm -hmm. and like tongue in cheek sarcastic humor. Yeah, he's he's very sarcastic. <laughs> but uh, but I, I but the feeling of this book was it felt like one of those old edited by Denny O'Neill, Alan Davis kind of bat books. Mm -hmm. Like it felt like one of those things that would have been, you know, in a prestige book, it would have been like maybe 40 pages or less. And you could have told the whole goddamn arc in 40 pages or less. Mm hmm. This this whole run has been really really decompressed, and that's my only really complaint about it. Mm -hmm. But uh, that feeling is very rare nowadays in Batman, and uh, so it was cool to get it. Uh, I didn't read the countdown to Task Force Z, but I don't care about that. Uh, so I just read the Batman book, and I really okay. enjoyed it. I was just like, this is really cool, and it had that old school feel, like anything can happen. But I know that everything will get back to normal afterwards, so I can right. just enjoy the moment mm -hmm. and not be like, oh god, are they gonna kill Batman? Is I, am I gonna be like off this book for three years while I'm waiting for things to get back to normal? And it's like, no, it's just a fun, ridiculous book. Right. And Batman and Huntress like team up, kind of, you know, which is rare. Uh, so I, I enjoyed it despite my, uh, my, my lack of enthusiasm for it in the previous run or pre previous issue. Yeah. Yeah. You were kind of like, you originally liked it. It was, it was, yeah, that a, it was only that one last issue. I was it was like, like a little bit of a roller coaster. It was. Yeah. A little bit. Not like, uh, yeah, there are more books. Like, it was like my level of Spider-Man is a, is a roller coaster. <laughs> this, this is, this was more just like, there was a weird jolt where I'm like, well, oh, ow, but I still enjoy the ride. <laughs> uh, Nick Smith, have you ever read uh, the recent uh, Count Crowley comic? One of the best non-DC Marvel comics I've read in years. No, you? Uh, no. <laughs> Can you tell how not certain I am about the things that I read? Right. What is wrong with me? Go ahead. Uh, Martin Sorensen. Uh, hi, a last trade paperback of Seven to Eternity by Remender slash Opeña slash Hollingsworth releases this September. One of my favorite comic yeah. books, but never heard it mentioned on Comic Pop, so I thought I'd recommend it. It's magical. Take care. Well, uh, there you have it. Yes. Because I've never read it and I have no idea what it is. That's I've why it hasn't it. been mentioned. I have seen it many a time. Mm. I've seen that. And like for some reason, my brain makes it into a novel every time. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I don't know if it's the title. It could be. I, I don't know. Isn't that weird? It is weird. Like, I'm like, I know exactly what you're talking about. And yeah. I know you've seen it too. I'm sure I have. We might even have it for God's sake. <laughs> With 1800 trades, oh you never God, know. Oh my God, stop. <laughs> And finally, uh, yeah. getting right down here, Joey Amorum. Hey, guys, can't wait for back issues 400. Happy to be here. That's right. We're turning uh, 400 uh, or at least 400 ep episodes over on YouTube.com slash comic pop. That looks that doesn't look like anything to me. Oh, OK. It looks like a photograph of the outside world and Westworld to me. I look like I'm a robot. <laughs> uh, but no, I uh, yeah. Episode 400 comes out this Wednesday. You should check it out. If you want to watch it right now, you can go to patreon.com slash comic pop and uh, join the tier and you can watch it that way. But yes, uh, we're, we, we reached 400 episodes and really it's not 400. It's more like 403 because I've already re like recorded at least two other episodes. But, yes, uh, but this is the 400. This is episode 400 in the playlist. So uh, they'll, yeah. be, they'll be alarmed when the when the these show opens, when the episode opens, because it will be a little different give as it, a, it opens. Give, but it a, give it a few minutes. It's going to be a very interesting show. I hope you really enjoy it give it a minute give it at least three minutes 
Uh, and the Milkman. I'm the Milkman. My milk is delicious. Finally read Batman Earth 1 Trilogy, one of my favorite Batman stories. Can't wait for Volume 3 on back issues. Well, you won't have to wait very long, probably no. about another month, and you'll be able to watch it because that's, we did that. That's right. And thanks for promoting yourself, Milkman. What a weird thing to say. But Whatever. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Just taking a stride, man. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, I guess. That's me, apparently. Yeah, right? Uh, I read Superman, uh, Son of Kal-El number two from Tom Taylor and John Timms. You did? Yes. There's, and... been a, there's been a little bit of fanfare. Not fanfare. There's been a lot of discussion about this book because there's been some rumors. Rumors. Some rumors, some conjecture, some discussion about... The, uh, the rumor mill will be... Uh... Oh, it's always churning. It's always churning. Got to uh, produce that rumor flower. Yes, got to get. Well, yeah. Then the rumor flower, I guess, is uh, is, it, is clicks. Is shipped off into the world for others to make their rumor bread. Exactly. Yes, for you to eat and and consume. This really fell apart. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, but uh, son of Kal El, you know, John saves some people, uh, and then he talks to his dad, and his dad alludes to leaving and like leaving him in charge of it. Uh, and he gives him, you know, the fortress and stuff. It's like, whatever. It's fun. The cover I love. I love the image of the, like, the city, the city blasting out of the bottom of the of mm. the crest. Like, this is a gorgeous cover. It was almost, it, well, it, for a few minutes, it was the cover of this episode. Because I just thought it was so striking. Right. Um, I'm, I'm complimenting the cover a lot, which means I really didn't care for what happened in the book. So I, I, I apologize. But I will mm -hmm. say, uh, there's nothing in here that I didn't enjoy. Uh, the only thing was, like the first issue, None of this needed to happen to uh, John, but whatever. Uh, it This is more about John. This one actually is like, you know, he tries to have a secret identity because Clark revealed his identity and like everyone's sticking to that despite like the guy who made it happen not being in step with anybody else and then losing his exclusivity contract. So like, why are you still being beholden to this thing? Mm -hmm. But th that being said, uh, you know, he, he got, tries to go to college and it's like, college? What? How old is he now? Uh, and he tries to have a secret identity and it doesn't work out. And he meets this dude and like they become friends and it doesn't. Well, but like he has wait, to. How old do you think he is? I, I think he's like 16, 17. Right. But I mean, he is a. That could work. because No. Why? Because he can't be. Why? Because he'd have to be at least 17, 18 years old. Well, but like, but he is a like, they don't know he is, but like he, he can read faster. You know what I mean? Yeah, he like, could pretend to be a college student. Or a genius. There's a moment to in, get in early. It'd only be like a year early or so. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter. He can't go because uh, he has to reveal his identity and and fight some bad guys. But like, what is up with these supers having to, my supers, I mean like Superman family being like, I got to tell everybody. Yeah. It's me. Well, it gets revealed. It's not, he tries to have, he wants a little bit of time for himself, but he can't have it all. This poor guy, he needs to have a friend. And so he makes friends with this dude and people are like, are they gay? And that's the conversation that people are having. Not about how good this book is or how well drawn this book is or how like the implications for Superman. Cause like, what the hell is happening with Cal? Like, where is he going? But, Away. but people are like, Oh, I kind of looked at that dude kind of funny. What's going on here? Is, is John going to be gay and bleeding cool? would certainly like you to think that, or at least talk about it. So let's talk about it. Cause like, you know, click, uh, I don't really care one way or the other. For me, it's more like John shouldn't be this age. So, like, the more we talk about, like, what what, what apartment is John going to buy? What, uh, you know, what's John's 401k look like? You know, like, what, what university is John going to graduate from? These are all conversations that shouldn't be happening because John shouldn't be this age. Like, you're, right. just, you're, just, you're just wasting my time. You're just filling the air with nonsense that shouldn't be discussed. Well, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. No, I mean, like, the fact is, like, all right, so for him aging up did that time actually occur right he's he was in like a rock like he was in like a cave for however long and in a, in a kind of like bubble yeah you know where, where he came out of it he was that age but like he lived that time which they never really talk about because here's the really weird thing is that john was in like a prison for the bulk of his life you know for like the 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 whole for like 10 years right on uh, like with with an evil version of his father from the crime syndicate kind of being his jailer and an evil version of his mother being his jailer as well like, that would be he'd be so weird and crazy mm -hmm. like he would be messed up and instead he's just like hi I'm what the editors want me to be. Yeah. And, like, and it's maybe, like, that's so in. Maybe that will be like a, like something that. Occurs. Yeah. Maybe he's a time bomb and we'll just explode. Yeah. Which is like really unfortunate, but 
I really, I agree that there should be like some ramifications from that time spent yeah. in, in his mental state. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. Like so much so that maybe his dad would be like, I can't, leave you here by yourself kiddo yeah because you <laughs> might just lose it and break the earth in half yeah which fair enough yeah that could happen they never address that and i feel like they never will never addressed never explained <laughs> but uh it's one of those things where it's like oh man this is a big thing and it's like it's not <laughs> and it shouldn't be but, like so here it is yeah. you know meh so that's a thing that, ex that exists. It does exist. Uh, Radium Theater Productions, Tom Taylor, Aussie focusing on sad world events. Yes, that's what this book is. He's he's Australian and he's like, oh, how come how come how come nobody deals with this? And that's I, like that's what John says. I, I he basically constantly says constantly forget that he is right that he's from Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he also said, did Oracle do an Aunt Becky to get John <laughs> into university? <laughs> Probably, right? She could do it. Yeah, <gasps> except she would get away with it. Yes, but uh, yeah. So that's really weird. Hey, did you mm. read that book that I that I yes, told you I about? Uh, so I wanted to talk about this because you, you know you know what it is. I actually read it last night. Yay! Go ahead. Well, go ahead. No. Oh, we we both read uh, based on South recommendation, the unbelievable Unteens by Jeff Lemire and Tyler Crook. South said Tyler Crook, and that was like he was like you gotta check out the art here. And he's like it's by some guy named Tyler Crook, and I'm like the guy who did Harrow County. I'm in. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's all you had to say apparently for me. Not that I don't like Jeff Lear's work. No, but no, apparently it's true. that was all you had to say. For yeah, me to no, you love Descender, for example, and uh, and yeah. other books that aren't. No, I like uh, <laughs> I I do like his work. It's just like Tyler Crook's art is like right in my wheelhouse. Yes, that's the thing. Stylistically speaking, it's mm -hmm. like subjectively something I find to be like a great storytelling mechanism. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Black Hammer is one of those things. Not to interrupt. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry but it's one of those things that people keep. No, don't apologize. I'm the one who interrupted. <laughs> but uh, people say, keep, you got to read Black Hammer. And like the more people emphatically tell me I got to read Black Hammer, the less I'm inclined to read it. And I never will. But uh, I did read this because I, and I, by the way, if I had known it was a Black Hammer tie-in, I probably wouldn't have because of how badly people want me to read Black Hammer. Uh, but uh, I just don't care. I'm just like, I don't have time or the real estate in my brain to, to dedicate a whole new universe. But I saw the first two pages in this book out of context. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, so I bought the book. I'm like, sight unseen, bought the book. And, yeah. and I was like, Heh. and I read it more or less because I knew you were going to love it. I read those two pages. I'm like, oh, Tiffany book. I'm going to get on the ground floor right now and read yeah. it. And I and then I, and, but so yeah so unbelievable unbelievable unteens yeah and I, I regardless of I, again I'm on the same boat with Black Hammer I know we own it and it's literally been on my comicsology wish list for quite some time but it was just something that like I never had an opportunity to get into and then it kept getting larger and then it was like now it's not just a book I want to read now it's a time commitment right exactly that's the other thing I said I got to spend a lot of time that's reading what, these things it ha yeah and like you know i like we we read for the the, the, quote the joy quote job but we also want to read for just for, having a nice time and it's like you got to manage that time anyway yeah you know, regardless of that um this i just i i like i forgotten we even had that conversation so i just read this book on its own yay so that said i feel like and those who know black hammer more than i do which is anyone who's read it um who like may say that they disagree with this but i feel like if you don't know that world you can still enjoy this book right yeah, that's because the thing. This, that... this book gave me vibes of Doom Patrol, but less esoteric. Yes. Like, yeah, this like is a... a less esoteric version of Doom Patrol. Yeah. I'm not in like a like bad way that I'm saying that. No. It's just it's very approachable. It's just very approachable. And I just love Crook's artwork so freaking much. I always have. I feel like I always will. Yeah. Like it's not just the way in which he renders faces and scenes. It's his color palette. It's everything about his work. Yeah. I, I just really, really like it a mm -hmm. lot. Um, but again, very specifically should be used for projects. There is, it's gone now. There was a, nobody could see it. There was a fly on the brim of my hat. Yes, it was horrible. And it's been bugging us since uh, we started. Well, it just landed here. And I was like, what's yeah. there? Ah! <laughs> it was right there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Um, but that's it. Really enjoyed the story uh, yeah. that, that's presented. And, you know, I look forward to seeing more of this world depicted by Tyler Crook. Yeah. Yeah. I just there, you know, there's a moment, there's an opening sequence about that depicts a comic con. Mm -hmm. I feel like it actually is more of an honest portrayal of what a comic con is today, but it's set in the nineties. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't think comic cons were this big. Like, 
<laughs> like well, the show maybe here. Yeah, well, in this universe, yeah, yeah it is, it's very possible. I know nothing about the Black Hammer universe, so maybe. Uh, but I will tell you that like it felt very real and raw in this whole sequence here, which is mm-hmm. beautifully portrayed. But uh, yeah, I loved it. I was just like, wow, what a cool light, like insight into the life of an artist um, and, and, and how that, you know, it tugs at you. And yeah. It's like, Oh, I was like, yeah, it's a visceral book. I loved it. And then it, it's funny. I'd rather, I think I'd rather have read all that. Cause like when it gets to the superhero stuff, I'm like, nah, I see what we're doing. Okay. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. This is cute. This is like, oh, what if they reboot over like Captain Planet or Doom Patrol was a new, th- you know, was a was a kid's cartoon. Like, hey, let's, hey, we're, we're a new show. We're a TV show on like Amazon. Yeah, let's cute. do it. And it's like, okay, yeah, that I see your Amazon pilot. But like, what about this? What about this opening sequence of this artist yeah. who like has a very small fan base and really doesn't want her book to get canceled? And like, it was eating ramen because she can't afford anything because the comic book industry is like kicking her while she's down. Like, this is a really cool book. <laughs> and then it's like, Hey, you're a superhero. Let's go. And I'm like, okay, all right, you're, you're going to have fun. See you later. Yeah. That looks fun. Yeah. Like anyway. I, you, you look like you're going to have a good time. Good for you. But I'd rather read the book that you're sad in, but I did appreciate it. I was just like, that's really cool. But yeah. it's also like, no, oh, okay. That's no, oh, I see where you're going with this. <laughs> Kali Frederick, uh, Robin and John Superman are my top DC books this week. Nice. Nice. There was a question in chat if we'd done uh, Harold County on back issues. No, no, we have not. No, and, and mainly because I don't, I don't think it will. Um, People wouldn't watch. It. Yeah, that's really what it is. <laughs> we, you know, we didn't do more than three volumes of Saga because the because the latest episode of Back Issues has as many views as that episode. Oh, yeah, that's actually a that's actually a double fail because both videos did really poorly. But uh, but like six years apart. That hurts. Yeah. Ouch. I know. So that's why. I mean, it really, and it was like Saga really worked out. And then like volume three, everyone's like, ah, I get it. And I'm like, okay. I guess You've so. spoken. Uh, Carl Maxey says, uh, Tiff, you said we had one out of 14 million shot of getting a live spider verse. Tell me this is it. I did. I guess. At some point. Did I say that? Probably. I might have said that. I say lots of things. I say lots of stuff. Uh, so I yeah, say lots of things, right? What were you gonna review? I was gonna review Strange Academy by Scotty Young and Humberto Ramos. Yay! Hey, speaking of Scotty Young, where the hell's that book? Unless I was maybe I was making a um a reference to Doctor Strange. Looking yes, into the universe, into the universe, no doubt. I'm trying to pull it together. Right, come on. it must be rattling around back here somewhere. But where's that book about the artist? What? It's a full sentence that Scotty Young wrote. Oh, I don't know. It hasn't come out. Right? Where's the Where's part of two? Where's yeah. part two of the me you love in the dark? The me you love in the dark. Yeah. I'm like, wait, give me a second. I got this. Uh, listen, I'm not going to really go into this other than the fact that like they're going to deal with uh, the ramifications of um, Mr. Misery or Misery from the Jason Aaron uh, Doctor Strange run, uh, dealing with one of their students. What I will say about this book, and I think a lot of people who discover this book, because that's what I feel like this book is. Yes. This book is a discovery for for folk. This is the type of book that like someone finds the trade of someone gets picks up an issue of it and is like where has this been can you believe it's it's survived this it's long? 12 issues it's 12 issues it said the end at the end of this i was like oh, oh no. no but then there was like a preview or like the, the cover for issue 13 oh shit i was like oh, it's like the end of this story because this book was made to be canceled <laughs> <laughs> i feel bad i'm sorry it's about children it's it's about magic it's got dr strange's name in it you know, it's a Marvel book, so it's going to get canceled. Right. I mean, like, I will, like, listen, this same book, team, this book's team, though, is hitting it, knocking it out of the park. Um, they're firing on all cylinders and any other cliched phrase you'd like me to put in there about how well these two work together. Yeah. Um, it's the type of book, as I've said before, it's a feel good kind of story. Yeah, we're dealing with kids. Yeah, we're dealing with magic. Yeah, you're going to get like, you know, silly sort of like, you know, plot lines and teen drama and teen angst kind of comes into this a little bit. Of course. As like a method of like defeating something. And why shouldn't it? But I had this revelation as I was like completing this issue that I was like, what I like about this book is even though it is like maybe a little lighter here and there, again, you still have those moments of gravitas, but it also doesn't feel frivolous. Right. Like it doesn't feel like they don't care. Yeah. Like whatever. They're just checking. And the I've boxes. seen those books before. Yeah. No, it's like they're, this is the story they want to tell. And these are the characters they want to talk about. And the characters are fun. Right. Like they don't, 
I know on this show we've brought up a lot about creators creating characters just, just to, to just cash to, in. Yeah, just to cash in. These characters feel to me like they've always been there. Right. That's they've, very they, authentic. Like they have like an authentic voice. stake and a voice in this universe. And I really like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's um, like a young Avengers kind of thing. Yeah. Where it's like, Hey, look at these characters that someone actually gave a shit about made for the purpose of telling a story. Yes. And then happened to also set the groundwork for like, if Chris Evans didn't want to make Captain America movies. Anymore. Right. And the fact is like, if you don't know, if you like, if you didn't read Dr. Strange, like from the Aaron run, you, you still need it. Up with Dr. Strange, if you don't really know much about the magic part of the Marvel universe. You don't need it. Cause the book really does a, a solid job of making sure that you understand what's going on. Even if you're not a hundred percent familiar with it. Nice. It's just a fun book to read. You can grab, all the issues now you've completed like two arcs three arcs i don't know how they're binding this right however we did see a version of it i mentioned this last time that was like manga sized yes full color but manga sized printing kind of to appeal i think to a younger audience as well i don't think it's just for a younger audience though. no I think anyone can get enjoyment out of it so that's all i want to say about that I wasn't going to go into details about the book. I just wanted to sell it. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a good book and we don't want to get canceled. So I have no idea what the sales are number numbers are for. It. I don't know what it is either. I'm just excited. Like that. It's I, getting a 13. I do love that. They like wrote the end. I was like, Oh, I mean, you know what it was? I wasn't like, you know, like upset. No, it was it just was like, like, okay. There was an end. They had a nice time. They whatever, got to end right? it. Yeah. Like it wouldn't be like a tragedy. It wouldn't be a tragedy. I would like more, but it, but luckily there is more. And yeah. it's not like that end wouldn't have been like, and that's the end of all the stories. It was like, that's the end of this story. At least it got to that. But I was like, oh, cool. 13's coming. So yeah. I'm in. Is it funny who selectively likes that Aaron run and like of Doctor Strange and who will reference it? And people go like, hey, I like that run. Just quietly yeah, just go like, hey, I'm going to reference it. That's one of those things that's just so funny. Like, I know there's a lot of debate about Jason Aaron's run on Avengers. Yes, it's quite awful. Um, But in my head, Aaron has like wrote Strange. Yeah. Strange, and I, like, one of my favorite runs. And he has wrote uh, Conan, Conan, which I love that too. So I'm like, I don't get it. Maybe if it's just like, it's the team's too much. I. It, I, I think it's the I think it's the freedom and the bigness. You know, be. like Astonishing Spider-Man Wolverine is very self-indulgent, mm. but with Kubert on art and the focus on two characters, it works on every level and I love right. it. Yeah. But uh but I could see how if he had like six or seven more characters, it would be a disaster. And I've seen it because it's called Avengers and it's from when he started to now. <laughs> and I'm 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 more right every time he puts out a new issue. Every time I check online, there are more and more people who are like, so I'm done uh now and I'm starting to question everything because like I liked the first two arcs and now here I am at arc nine and I hate it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dan V900 is back to say, I'm very tired of Clark telling everyone he's going away. Like, why is he leaving? It's so forced. John being 17 with aging up seven years should be nuts. Like you said in his life, I'm struggling with it. Yeah, you should be because it's weird. And don't accept that they are just like, don't want you to think about it. Maybe, you know, I, I got to say, like, if he leaves, I, I almost don't want to know the story. Right. Just don't even do it. Like, he'll just come back. No, if he, if John, if Cal leaves. Yeah. And he just comes back and you're like, what the hell happened? That's a black label book <laughs> that you could tell some other time with yeah. a better writer. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> I'm not saying Taylor couldn't do it and he's not a, he's not a bad writer. I'm just saying like, I don't give a shit about any of this stuff. <laughs> uh, he also recommends Dr. Andromeda or Dr. Star. Uh, apparently it's a black label book or a black hammer book, but you don't have to, you know, you don't have to read black hammer to get into it. Uh, so I will, uh, I will at least look it up if not uh, read it. There you go. Uh Oh, there's more. There's more. Uh, but uh, wait, there's more. RK, speaking of Superman with weird aging, we're finally getting an explanation of John, of Con L this week after most of the year without him. Do you think they're going to let him show up with the other supers? Uh, yeah, I think so. Why not? I think that would work. And I think they probably will. They're, they're not afraid of that at this point. Uh, he also mentions that uh, Thor, Wolverine, and Amazing, Amazing Fantasy are my far Marvel favorites. Honorable mention to Strange Academy. Love Freya's new look. Also, uh, That's a different person. Oh, sorry. Well, Kali Frederick said this. Uh, also, <laughs> AF is kind of underrated. Yeah, of course. Amazing Fantasy is great. Yeah, I, you know, it's funny. The only one of those that list I didn't read this week was Thor. That's right, which I hear was great. Me too. I heard that as well. And I thought about grabbing it and I don't know what happened. <laughs> like my brain was like, don't forget to, to, to pull, pick up Thor. To pull that. And now we're here. Uh, you know, that, that happens. 
Uh, I'm, yeah. <laughs> Algie Shirai helping us out. Thank you very Thank much, you very Algie. Much. Really, really appreciate it. And uh, Jacob Myhill. Hey, Sound Tiffany. This is Jacob from Australia. Hey, Australia. Good day. I've been watching you guys yeah, sorry. <laughs> since 2014. I wanted to thank you for all the enjoyment over the years. Your channel has definitely deserved all the success it's received. Well, thank you, Jacob. Really appreciate thank it, you. man. And thanks for watching us at like, I don't know what, four in the morning next week. I don't know what the time zone works for Australia, but I know it's it's wonky. But thank you very much. I'll, yep. I'll 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 I will show my appreciation by not doing an Australian accent. That again. is the best thing we could possibly do for uh, everyone. Right, I think so. Uh, and Tevia says it's eight forty nine a.m. It's the morning. Hey. You're in the future. Wow. Let us know how it goes. <laughs> how would you de-age John Kent and retcon Bendis's work? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to take a, a few minutes to do it. That sounds like an Elseworlds exchange episode. No, just... you just say he. That's not him. Right. I was literally leaning towards like clone robot yeah. uh, crime syndicate version of john it, it wasn't it wasn't a rock it was an egg right and yeah cooked him a little too long yeah they're like oops right he's the offspring of superwoman and uh all an ultra man oh, there you go i was just thinking like someone was trying to infiltrate whatever yeah and like they didn't count on i guess either the kryptonian side of him or the human side of him and it, he aged up too rapidly mm -hmm. so they just sent him back anyway yeah I think I would probably have John. I would. I. I. Now that I'm thinking about it, I think my pitch would be that John is John, and that he needs to go back in time and undo it, and so he chooses to like let go of his. Perhaps. Perhaps he could punch reality and undo it. I hope he doesn't. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like he. He un. He chooses to unmake his own reality. Okay. And he's like, I'm gonna reset, and I'm not even gonna remember it. But like, you know, he, he makes an ultimate sacrifice. So it's like you preserve what happened it did happen in an alternate timeline and john like has his agency because he chooses to throw it away right you know, like i that. mean I, I i don't know if that doesn't fly in the face of what they're doing now with like everything happened oh, who gives a shit i guess but that's what i'm saying that's like, why if, it's it's, there. if it's not him though but john is still there someplace right right and then, and, yeah, yeah and he's just a little boy he's just a little boy and everybody's got to go save him and damien can go too yes yeah damien doesn't believe it's him damien never believed it's him yeah. and he goes after him now that's a book i'd read <laughs> That actually kind of parallels when Damien died and Batman went to Apocalypse to go get him. Maybe John's on Apocalypse and Damien goes and he steals the Hellbat armor to rescue him. Now that's a book that I know the chat is going to fucking buy. <laughs> uh, Super Mac, I think. Oh, and you know who could write it? Peter J. Tomasi. There you go. Yes. Uh, Super Mac, I think they're setting up a War World story for Superman, but does it mean the future state meant something? They want you to think that. I don't know why. I don't, I don't know why they keep pushing for that future state thing. That's over, man. Let it go. So anyway. Uh, I guess that was our pitch. What did you read? Um. Oh, you know what? I just yelled um into the mic. I also read Superman seventy eight number one. Oh, how was it? It's cute. It's was better it? than Batman eighty nine. That's what I wanted to know. Yeah, it's better than Batman eighty nine. Superman seventy eight. It's cute. the 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 writing is better because like, Venditti's a real comic book writer, and uh, the art is like, it's it's super simple to get it out to approximate the looks of the actors without like being slavishly devoted. It's like every bad Firefly comic, which is to say every Firefly comic. <laughs> uh, but in the early days when Firefly was a comic or Serenity, yes. uh, and they were just like, I don't know, I'm going to draw Gina Torres from like a profile. Oh, I can't. So it just looks like a blob. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, they, they avoid that by doing this. I do want to know what actor they're thinking of for Brainiac though. But it's cute. It it mm. and it's it's one of those things where it's a good marriage of the comic and the movie. Right. Like it's the movie universe, but it's a comic book now. So mm -hmm. like we're not going to do the traditional obvious like Dick Don or Hollywood stuff. Like we're gonna also, you know, uh, pay homage to the character the way that character should be homaged. Okay. So I dug it. It was a it was a good book. It was well written. The art's fun, and it wasn't like and it was simple, but without being terribly, you know, like it wasn't like it was lacking. There are some books uh, that you know the art like is is a simple style, and it's like no, you just didn't finish it. Yes, yes, you're too mad. Uh, and uh, and Kevon the original says, would you ever cover Radiant Black on back issues? No, we will never do Radiant Black. Never, ever, ever. What did you read? I read Wolverine number fifteen this week. Cool. Um, I will say just as a heads up, everybody, I did not pick up cable. Uh, it doesn't mean I'm not going to read it, but this you week didn't have time. No, but this week was also a, a tie in into last annihilation. Ah, uh, that's, it's, it, this is the new, like that book is the new status quo for old man cable. Basically, right. The old man's back and he's in a tie in. And I'm like, pass, but it is written by Ewing. Ooh. So that's why that explains that. Yeah. So I'm like, mm, so I'm going to try the second issue of that. Mm -hmm. Probably go back and read the first one, but I want to, 
hopefully the second one is in a tie-in and just jump in. Yeah, to yeah, what yeah. The story's going to be. Uh, anyway, but I did read Wolverine uh, number fifteen this week, written by uh, Ben Percy with art by Adam Kubert. Yay! Uh, I, I like this story, but I won't. I'm not going to pretend like a big reason that I'm reading this book and keeping up with it is because I really like Adam Kubert's art. Yes. Um, it just. It's just fun. Yeah. It's just fun to look at. Uh, it's a Wolverine story. It ties right into the fallout, like I've said before, of the Hellfire Gala with the Marauder ship being destroyed. The logic diamond's gone. The logic diamond's that like power of the um, resurrection machine. Yep. Basically, as it's referred to, kind of. Mm -hmm. um, but this issue is really letting us know that, hey, remember that guy from Ten of Swords, Solemn? Yeah. Yeah, he's a thing now. Let's okay. Not forget that. Remember, he snuck off. That's right. Didn't yeah. Know what happened to him? I thought him. he was referenced in the other one. What in the last issue? Yeah. Yeah, but they, they're now they're giving you his origin story. Okay. Cool. <laughs> All right. No, no. We mentioned him, and we knew he was going to be a part. Right, of Right, but now he but is. No, hey, let's learn a little bit about him as a child. Okay. Oh, okay. Because that remember that big guy, that big pirate guy. Yes. Uh, Sever Blackmore, I think his name is. <laughs> he's got like acid blood. Okay. Remember, I was like, oh, my oh, God, aliens. it's an alien book. No, no it's, it's this dude. dude. It's just this big guy. I'll I bet know. it was an alien. Sever Blackmore. Because um, they have like a weird like rights thing going on. Like maybe it was an alien yeah. and they were like, you got to change it, it to a big really, dude. That would have been so dope. But anyway, <laughs> it turns out this guy um, back in the day ended up finding Solemn as like a little whelp kind of thing mm -hmm. and like took him and decided to raise him. And like taught him the ways of being like uh, like on the ship and taught him how to fight and stuff like that. But like he soon realized that he's like, I don't know if I created him or I just discovered him. Mm. And part of Solemn's whole bag is not only does he have adamantium skin, but he has the ability to kind of seduce anyone. Yeah. And so like you see him go through all of that and inevitably like, listen, Sever here made his own bed and then he had a lie in it. Yeah. So I don't really feel bad for him. <laughs> because he killed Solemn's parents uh, seemingly or it, like his whole everything yeah you asked for that uh, and so inevitably Solemn's like playing the long game and enjoying his whole journey okay and so he gets him and cuts his nose off like he had said that had happened to him so gotcha. he'd never, he's like he did that so I would never forget him mm. I'm like damn <laughs> damn <laughs> Did you see that video? No. <laughs> Friggin' uh, Kevin Hart and Don Cheadle. I I know it's a bit. It has to be a bit. But Don Cheadle, he was like, you know, I'm 57 years old. And Kevin Hart goes, damn. <laughs> <laughs> and Don's like, thanks. He goes, no, 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 no. I didn't mean it like that. I meant like, like, damn, that's cool. He's like, that is not what you said. <laughs> and then it just gets more and more and more. But it, like, I just, damn. <laughs> Great. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it just came out of him. Just, he, he's like, you're old. He's like, thanks. Maybe he meant like he looks good. That yeah, but that's <laughs> Jill didn't take it. Anyway. Way. But I think it's a bit. But anyway, go ahead. Oh um, I'm sorry. That's okay. But yeah, so yeah, damn, you never forget him. Never forget him. But Solomon's been working his way all over Earth, basically. And like he really likes going to like casinos and stuff like that. Okay. All he, right. He he's just He's just he's just having a good time. Yeah. And there's like a there's like a part here, like one of those like, you know, like infographics like Sage's log book, mm. where it says that like Solemn has been banned from uh every casino from in Nevada and New Jersey. Oh. I was like, huh. Well, that's the only place you can gamble unless you want to go on like the Mississippi. I'm River like, that's amazing. Like he's they're just like, no. Yeah. No. He's been like kicked out of way too many. Like he's all over the place. Uh yeah. He oh he's been banned from casinos. He, he's been banned from six dating apps. <laughs> like, <laughs> I didn't know there were that many. <laughs> he found them. <laughs> People be swiping on some of them. Yeah. Um. So Wolverine gets all this information about him, and that like you know clearly Solemn is like wanted them to meet or like like wanted certain things to occur. He is looking to not reveal his hand just yet. Uh-huh. Like a and, good poker player. Yeah, and Wolverine's like, cool, all right, thanks. Like Severus like, we'll work together. And like Wolverine's like, funny thing about we is that like inevitably, like if not now, then later you're gonna betray me. It's gonna be a whole bunch of like work and I don't want to deal with <laughs> that. So I think what I'm gonna do is since you gave me the information, I'm just gonna gut you and leave. Right, right. Okay. And that guy's like funny, that's what I was gonna say to you. Right. Like, ha ha ha, 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 ha. we're best friends. No uh he activates something in the ship which causes like magnets mm -hmm. he he magnets. had them installed because 
of Solemn's skin. Oh, right. Catch him. Because at one point, by the way, Solemn had stolen Sever's ship mm. years and years and years and years ago. Okay. And then gotten it back. So he did that in case it ever happened again. Yeah. So he uses it against Wolverine. Wolverine gets himself like uh, de triggers it because it's like a it's like a bone lever. <laughs> Sometimes you just like gotta have a bone lever. Yeah. Trigger the bone lever. Please. Um, and Wolverine's fighting guys left and right. And um, that's when Sever's like, okay, so like, don't forget, like, I'm made out of acid. <laughs> yes. No, we haven't forgotten. I've got you're I've on got, the cover. Yeah. I've got acid. And what he does is he's like, You didn't let me finish my story, Wolverine. And mm -hmm. Wolverine turns around and and Sever's holding the Muramasa blade. Oh. One of the two. Yes. And like Wolverine's like, okay. He's like, I will, I will burn this thing right here. Yeah. If you don't bring Solemn to me. Right. He's like, how did you get that? He's like, I, well, Solemn is the type of person that would literally do anything to not have to take a punch. And so Sever had almost caught up to him in a casino. Mm -hmm. Solemn took his blade, threw it up to hit a massive chandelier, like a ridiculously large chandelier, yes. which crashed down and he escaped. That sucks. Leaving the blade behind. Who leaves him. Well, anyway. So yeah, like yeah. Wolverine's like fine, and then Wolverine goes home to the moon, uh -huh. <laughs> and is standing there in his room, and he's like, "The only reason Solomon would give up the Muramasa blade is if he had another." And he picks up the one that's in his room and he crushes it. And he's like, <laughs> "Because he's been in my house." Yeah, Solomon got cool. into his house, and now Wolverine's like, "I do the job." Like, there's like a little like diatribe by uh, Wolverine at the end of this. It's like. You know, you, you work for like things, you're a part of something, but you're maybe not really a part of it. And that's how I feel. And like, I do the job and it's fine and I'm happy to do it. But like, this is different. He was in my den. <laughs> I'm like, oh, uh, shit. oh, that's great. Oh, shit. Wolverine's on the case. Yeah. <laughs> so, Unfortunately, it looks like Hubert's leaving after this. So that's OK. I still read. But I want to see him on story. the story. Yeah. But so, it's, yeah. regardless or regardless of that. Yeah. Um, I, I still want to see the completion of this story because I think Ben Percy's telling a fun Wolverine. It sounds fun. Like, yeah. Wolverine's like, you don't come into my house. Right. I love that. Especially because there's a door to Jean's room in there. <laughs> yeah. You don't come into my house and go to Jean's room. That's right. Jean! Jean! It's just Wolverine on his bed looking at a photo of the Muramasa blade crying Ugh. or touching it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. So really dug that book. So nice. if you haven't been reading Wolverine, uh, even though it is very much tied into uh, what's going on with the X-Men. It is something that you probably could kind of figure out as you go along if you just want to watch Wolverine be Wolverine. Sure, yeah. Uh, Radium Theater Productions PKJ has Superman and Authority go battle on War World. John protects Earth. Been fun. Why so cynical? Looks great from Comic-Con panel. Uh, not cynical, actually, just critical. But uh, yeah, also the Superman and Authority book, is it's kind of like not really in continuity uh superman is much older in that book and it's a mini series from grant morrison who was not working with pkj on that uh mm -hmm. so yeah um that's that uh trenton brown teen john was actually matrix all along <laughs> i love that idea oh my <laughs> god he's a goop he's a goop alien uh bailey tollison more invincible and back issues the show was helped views i doubt it uh we did the first volume and most subsequent volumes don't and there's like a thousand volumes of Invincible and it's an ongoing story. And uh, the time for me to dedicate my my channel to being an Invincible channel was when the show came out. And now that it's out, uh, it would not work. Maybe a second season. Maybe. Uh, Carl Maxley, Sal, which character annoys you more? Grifter, Batman, who laughs at Rolgozar? Rolgozar by a country mile. Rolgozar actually, he shows up and changes things. Like he shouldn't exist and he undoes things that shouldn't be. Batman, who laughs, you can pretty much ignore. Like he's... He doesn't instrumental. want you to, though. No, he doesn't. He insists upon himself. But, like, he's, you know, he's instrumental in events that, like, are wholly irrelevant after they're over, so you don't have to worry about them. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Grifter, again, you can just ignore Grifter. Nobody cares. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, and Deb M says, haven't read any Superman since Man of Steel. For me, it's hard to care about DC when Superman feels so directionless. Kid John was a great addition. I agree. Uh, he's in a better place, I think, than he was in the New 52. But even the New 52, and I will say this, and I hate to say it, but, like, New 52 at the very least had some kind of idea. Like they were doing things with Superman mm. and this was more like DC didn't need to do anything with Superman. Like somebody else was doing something and they were like, no, but they had no, they didn't have a better idea. Right. Uh, Storm King says Superman could wake up in bed from a bad dream in which John was a teenager. He goes in John's room and discovers that he's a child. A la Dallas. <laughs> uh, I feel like that undoes too much. It's too, it's too much. It's too messy. Too much work. 
It's funny though. It is funny though. I do like that. And, uh, and also he's Patrick Duffy. Exactly. Yeah, naturally. <laughs> Uh, the Bendis era will be a dream season. Yeah. Again, but that whole re- era of DC, we have to be a dream as well. <gasps> Maybe he's a Tulpa. Oh, there we go. Yeah. I'm sure DC would love to make references to Twin Peaks. RK, <laughs> there is a John that is currently in deep space with jor before the wormhole that leads to Earth 3, so we could just grab him. Yeah, that's true. There's a young one there. It's just waiting for us to grab him. And then reveal Don't that... Don't say that. And then reveal <laughs> that, uh, J- that jor is fake, because mm-hmm. that never went anywhere good. So yeah, we got a couple other books to talk about. Uh, you want to talk about Reptilian because Batman Reptilian is a book what that you, came out. Oh, okay, because that's it for me. Yeah, that's fine. I got like two more books, I guess. Okay, Superman versus Lobo <laughs> is a Black Label book. Oh, you it, just didn't want to talk about it. No, no, no. no. Oh. I just don't want. I just want to like. I want to power through it. I just, yeah, you know, go for it. Because uh, Tim Seeley and Sarah Beatty uh, wrote this with Mirka and Dolfo on art. Um, I don't know how many issues this series is, but it's like a Black Label book. It's got the oversized format which i'm enjoying with a black label it's one of those things where it's like if it's a black label book i'm probably gonna buy at least the first issue check it out um superman versus lobo is um it, it's it's it, it's not very good um i'm not saying that lightly uh it's i should say not for me it's certainly not for me in any way um but uh it's very much uh kind of obvious and that's like that's the harshest criticism i could give it um it wants to talk about things that are happening today, which I have no real problem with. Um, but I would rather it be done with a little more finesse. Mm. Um, and that is not the case with this. Uh, also, you know, Lobo is insufferable, uh, but I've seen him done with, you know, varying degrees of success. Um, you know, I, I find Keith Giffen's Lobo insufferable as well. So, you know, it's not like... It's just Lobo. Yeah, he's Lobo, that's but, he's, but that's who he is. That's, and, he, and he's more or less like that in this. But, you know... When you there's a lot there's a lot about this that's just like what why what are you doing like what what who's is, who what is this it, you know well what's funny about this is like I'm I didn't read this it's it's you a, told me you told me a little bit about it beforehand and like not that this may not have like ideas that are you know evergreen as we said earlier about life story but there is something about books like this that tend to date themselves they certainly do and you know as we've like been doing back issues and like gone through books that like heavily rely on something of the times there is something interesting to be said because sometimes it's a critique but sometimes or it's fun just... uh time capsule right but like it's also like okay well yeah it's it's very cemented yeah I think somebody says maybe it's for lobo fans well then you won't like it <laughs> well maybe i mean like if, if lobo fans if you're are... a big lobo fan you probably won't enjoy this because lobo is a like troll like a basement dwelling troll like he is a he's an avatar for like the negative elements of internet criticism yeah but if there's like an element of lobo that you like which is like because there is something about lobo where he's unflappable yes he is and that's kind of fun he is unflappable in this then there is something there that is oh no he's not out of character right so it's just that he's enjoy it he's be yeah but he's he's a butt monkey like he's being used it is as a mouthpiece it is one of those things though where it's like you really can't trust the cover Oh yeah, no, that does not happen in this book. Um, you see a versus thing, but I, also yeah, versus. I I don't. I'm not saying but a versus, Batman versus Predator though. A versus can't be a conversation. I think that well written conversations can be like a great fight. Yeah. Um, but it's Lobo, so I guess I assumed. It, I, I was going to do Lobo this. does declare a kind of interesting warfare on Superman that is not mm. typical to his type, but uh, it's it's not it's not great. Mm. and uh and i will not be picking up anymore but like you know it ain't for me yeah and uh you know uh, it really isn't for me yeah so that's the end of that and uh you know my other problem with it the only thing i'll say is with regards to like you know kind of giving it a a a negative criticism is just like Mm. i uh this is not what black labels for yeah now black label isn't really anything so it's like black label could be anything but like the over the oversized element doesn't add anything to it, doesn't change anything, mm-hmm. it doesn't make it any better, it doesn't it, the artist doesn't take any special liberties or try anything new or break the mold or even just explore the space. Uh, there's there's no uh, inappropriate like there's nothing in here that warrants the unrating, and uh, so it, it could have just been anything. It's mm-hmm. just, it's anything, and it's set in its own timeline. So like at least it didn't have at least they had the good sense to not be in continuity, but yeah. like. It, it doesn't need to exist. Okay, that's fair. So there it is. 
Yeah, and you read this. I read another. This is this is the apparently the black label section of our. Of is our, it technically a black label book? Black label is right there. Good. This is a uh, Batman Reptilian black label book. This is book three by Garth Ennis and Liam Sharp. Um, this is a book you need to read with lots of lights because <laughs> it's really dark. It is, and I don't mean like dark and tone. In, in no, tone. there is that. Yes, um, but it's also like it's just it's a grim gritty book. Um, that you just you need a lot of light to actually like fully take in all of the uh artwork yes which i wonder if it's actually better digitally in that sense perhaps uh i don't know yeah uh, this is an interesting book i i've read now three issues of it you have yes you said it like this you said to me privately that this might like kind of make make or break it was the yeah, this issue. was long as gonna make or break it while I know you had concerns about Batman being written like a lunatic, and we do see hints of it here, and yeah, there, yeah, yeah. But occasionally, like Alfred is really like had enough of that version of Batman in this, okay, and like is really sticking it to him a little bit, okay. And honestly, the fact that that's happening, Batman's like, no, I don't mean that. I mean, that. and I'm like, oh, <laughs> are you, Ennis? Are you aware? Right. I can't tell. I mean, he 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 is like he's aware of himself. He's yeah. not. He doesn't like lose himself when he's writing these things. Like, well, he, well, I mean, like, is he aware like what a lunatic he's making Batman, and that like may not almost certainly yeah. right. Um, the art's fine. I don't like the coloring on it so much. It it looks like it's trying to evoke that Arkham Asylum, a serious house and serious or Dave Dave McKean look. Yeah, it's it's, it's like which Dave, is ironic. Well, I was gonna say it's like Dave McKean meets um kelly jones okay because like he wants to do the spiral. yeah he wants to do that like kind of really interpretive batman that, that batman silhouette yeah that's like what is happening right but i like that's 90s he's man. that spawn so 90s though <laughs> it is it is like highbrow 90s yes i what i will say and i think he drew and i think he wrote it for steve dillon originally sure and which that, by the way i don't think that would have fit either i i would have i would have loved to have seen that no I legitimately would have loved to have seen that. And I, and I think it would have fit. Mm -hmm. I honestly do think it would have fit because there are a lot of conversations that happen in this. Okay. A lot of conversations, a lot of um, disturbing images, mm -hmm. especially in the second one. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that could have really fit. Mm. Um, would have been very different feeling, but I, I think it would have been okay. Cause I do love the look of this book. It is. Like it's, it feels such a, it feels like a, like a time cast. I, I, again, I, it's like a love hate thing for me. Cause there are pages I love. Yeah. And there are pages I'm like, Oh <laughs> no. yeah. Um, it reminds me of that dead man book that you did on back issues. Yeah, there are pages that I love. Yeah. And, and pages that you I'm didn't, like, oh. but it has that painterly quality to it. It does. But some of the painterly stuff, feels weird mm -hmm. and too uh, digital mm, okay okay well probably just get the get the damn thing out I but guess. yeah um you know that, why i'm you know why i'm really defending this book's kind of and i don't really need to defend it you but don't like, have to defend it because i'm enjoying it i know i know well okay but my <laughs> you the reason why i'm like no i like it is because i want i want this to kind of come back like i want these books to look like this again Oh, I, I want this book to look like this. I want I more books like, like Black Label should be this. Like that's what, well, this should be bigger. Should this should be, be the big format. It not should this. Be, I wish it was the big format, honestly. Um, it's not, listen, this is, I'm not saying this in a bad way, but this is like a, feels like a sort of like Legends of the Dark Knight on steroids. <laughs> okay. Because it's it's not pulling punches because they get the rating, the 17 plus sure. rating on it. So they can be more violent. They can be more visual. They can, you know, say certain things or allude to certain things. But it feels sort of like the Legends of the Dark Knight. It's a mystery. Right. It's an actual mystery. Yeah. Something is killing off the villains of Gotham. Mm -hmm. A monster is killing off the villains of Gotham. Right. And in the second issue, which we didn't get a chance to really talk about, um, but in the second issue, like he has a conversation with like a like fading penguin mm -hmm. um, who says like who alludes to something. And then Batman pieces it together that whatever it is, whatever this beast is, because it's a monster mm -hmm. is like biting them. <laughs> yeah. And then letting them go. It's tasting them. Oh, like it's looking for something. Right. OK. I don't know. I kind of like that. I really dig that. In that issue, <clears throat> Batman references that like. Some like another animal that will do that is the great white. And then he, and I don't know it off the top of my head, but he says the like scientific name for them. And all I could hear was, Richard Oh, Carcarian Carcarius. Yes. He says it. I was like, <laughs> it's a Carcarian Carcarius. It's the great white. Yes. 
Yes. Um, so I was like, that's fun. <laughs> we still don't know 100% what, what the thing is. The well, only- I know it's a reptile. Well, yeah. And like, obviously, on the <laughs> list of like possible suspects is Killer, Killer Croc. Croc. Okay. He's cool. the only one we haven't run into yet. Mm. However, there is like, there's a, and it's, this is clearly going to be talking a lot about Killer Croc. You, you know, Batman's like, we don't know where Killer Croc came from. Right. Like, what is he? Like, sure, we know he's had like a skin condition and people bullied him and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But is he a man who became this? Is he a crocodile that became man? Is it something else? Yeah. I don't know. Right. All I know is that in the blood samples we found at the scene, there's estrogen present. Okay. So it's like, Maybe so it's it might not but, be but but like him. they're like it has croc evolved is it something because like whatever this thing is based on reports it's huge right oh cool Batman still has not run into it in this issue that's awesome that's I'm kind like, of exciting I... Ennis has taken his time and I appreciate that yeah. I kind of dig this pace the the issues read fast they they read real fast but mm-hmm. it's a black label book so the only thing in the back are um preview art for the next issue yeah. and covers it's it's funny because i don't think this is going to be like anyone's favorite batman story no. but it makes it just makes me feel like i'm reading and i i know we've talked about this that this is like a script you have for yeah. someone else um but it it doesn't feel outdated it just feels like something i found right like this is like, like yeah I said, it feels like, like you found that like, in the back issue well i was thing. gonna say like you know how like strange academy is a discovery book for a lot of people this feels like a discovery book yeah I'm for like, somebody Ooh, oh i'm okay that's cool all right what's going on here like we deal with the joker in this obviously by the cover it, it, it he's there for this issue and then that's that we're good okay that's fine we're good so dig it yeah it's it's really it's again and don't forget it is ennis's take on batman right you have to accept the fact that like in issue two when he's trying to have that conversation with the penguin he tells the penguin listen the paramedics are on their way. I told them the wrong floor so that we could have a conversation. Oh. I'm like, oh. I kind of like that. <laughs> when the paramedics show up, they're like, we got turned around. Mm-hmm. And it's like, uh-huh. <laughs> That's right. That's cool. <laughs> uh, Radium Theater returns to say, sorry, Sal, I mean cynical to be mean from interviews. Superman titles will be trying to, at some point, in terms of critique, I'm optimistic Superman editorial sticking the landing. Apologies again. No need to apologize. It's just, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's normally a one-way conversation, so I appreciate it. But uh, again, don't worry about it. Uh, but yes. Uh, yeah, you know what it is? Like, cynical gets thrown around a lot. And, and usually in a dismissive way where it's like, oh, well, you're cynical, so I don't need to listen to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, no. no, no fear. I think we're just used to hearing that in terms of a very distinct tone yes. or like intent behind precisely it. deb m sorry it's off topic but have you seen alan moore's the sh- uh, show where he's a <laughs> magical moon man i think he's reached his final form i haven't seen the show i've seen shots yes, of that and, and i kind of it. like i'm like do i want to and remove my mind's eye of what it is right can it live up to what i think he's like in that mm-hmm. because i think you're right it may be his final form yeah i would love to see it uh, <laughs> i'll have to watch it i don't know if it's out or if it's like he talked i saw an interview recently or i, I saw I, that he did an interview about it yes recently so i don't know uh rory groth finally able to catch you guys live with my new college schedule hey. strange but nice to be back at school hope you guys are doing well or well, great thank you very much rory and welcome <laughs> back to school yeah congrats on on I, how it sounds like you're actually on campus is so, you know stay vigilant stay safe out there but enjoy yourself exactly so uh spider-man let's do this uh yes let's, let's do the title of the episode that my brain couldn't parse for yes the life of and me, i apologize that was, no that was I on me i was like that. more one one yeah zero one one so uh amazing spider-man number 72 from nick spencer and go. a whole bunch of artists as is the case to get this damn thing out on time uh, because Nick Spencer is busy working on Substack, uh, so he's got to get the hell out of here. Uh, Federico Sabatini, Zay Carlos, Mark Markello, like, Ferrer- the team last time. Ferreria, yeah, and Carlos Gomez. So it's not like they're just pulling random. People. No, no, this no. no it's like, this, this is the this team. is the art team. Yeah, this book to get the book out. It's a normal sized issue. It takes five different people to write. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so the the last several issues of this whole Sinister War thing have been. Uh, Kindred has uh, master planned his way into making the uh, Sinister, all of the Spider-Man's villains team up and fight Spider-Man, some of whom Spider-Man normally doesn't fight. And they all are fighting him because uh, he has revealed, that is to say Kindred, who was originally revealed to be Harry Osborn, uh, that 
he'll give them their souls back or they won't go to hell if they kill Spider-Man or some nonsense. doesn't mm-hmm. matter. The point is to see Spider-Man fight people. But is it just one of them, though, or all, no, of, them? all of them at the same time? No, but like if one person does it, do they all get it? I, I think that, that each of them has a team. And so like whoever, wh- whichever team kills Spider-Man. I feel like there should be infighting. Uh, there should be, but there isn't. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but that's been every issue. And now we're up to the last issue. This is the last tie-in, I think, or this is the next, the penultimate tie-in. Yeah. Sinister War ends in the next uh, this week and then i guess there'll be a tie-in after that okay. but uh and then i think spencer's off the book but uh and who's jumping on uh zeb wells and a, and a right team I, of for, people. I keep forgetting you've literally said this to me three this is the third week now yeah maybe that zeb remember, wells has taken over maybe for, i'll remember it next time it's a team of people but zeb's <laughs> in charge he's like he's gonna be the hickman of the spider-man team which means he'll probably quit in a year oh just stop it so uh yeah this but this one is yes. different and the reason why it's different is because it reveals that uh spider-man isn't the only person in the spider family to have made a deal with mephisto uh, in exchange for something that their heart truly desired so uh, if you are not familiar, by the way, with any Spider-Man stuff uh, in Spider-Man One More Day, Spider-Man makes a deal with Mephisto to uh, get his identity back. But it's really kind of more about saving Aunt May's life. And then as a consequence, his identity is back in the bottle uh, and he gives up his marriage to do so. Uh, this was a contentious point of history. If I could say that uh, it might be an understatement, but uh, it's it ushered in a brand new day for Spider-Man and made a lot of people uh, fans of the book because apparently it took... Uh, getting rid of his marriage to get make Spider-Man relatable again. Uh, insert slash sarcasm hashtag. But like the, um, the, the for whatever reason, since that happened, which was 10 years ago or more, uh, Spider-Man has been alluded to this deal. The, the, it was such a, a, a point of contention for spider fans that they, they came up with another book called omit, which was omitting what they did, but it stands for one moment in time where they were like, the because they they put in this little thing where Mary Jane whispers to Mephisto something and you don't see what it is and he's like oh and he has this great like drawn like image of like it doesn't matter but like uh, Mary Jane whispers another deal a secret deal to Mephisto maybe she it, they tell you what it is and oh, oh, I was gonna say like. <laughs> Like less than a year later, they I told was, you what happens. I was going to say, is this like, like I know we just made a Twin Peaks reference, but yeah. that is a very Laura Palmer thing to do. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And backwards talk, she says like, I'll see you again in 25 years. years. <laughs> Maybe that's what she said or Mephisto said. So we got to go another 15 years. But uh, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, the deal is, she says, he'd never go with this deal. I'll convince him to make the deal if you make it so that you weren't the one who made this deal in the first place. So then he's like, okay. So he turns into a bird and he goes back in time and makes it so their marriage didn't happen through time travel. And instead, Spider-Man goes to like Doctor Strange like he did last time. But instead of saying no, he says no and then calls Mr. Fantastic and Iron Man. And the three of them work out a science and magic combination deal to save Aunt May and make the deal not and make his identity secret. Um, which why? of course okay but why would mephisto do that uh, because i needed mephisto to do it in the first place and I, but i i still work at marvel and i don't want people yelling at me anymore right stop yelling at me yeah stop yelling at me so uh, omit happened but then people kept referencing it like people just kept putting it in so it's like you made this event where it's like don't do this okay fine we didn't do this and then they're like oh but mephisto though <laughs> mephisto remember Mephisto? remember the deal remember the thing that made you quit spider-man well here it is again <laughs> and then uh they made superior spider-man which is a book that like a lot of people liked and a lot of people preferred to main spider-man and it was a great opportunity for marvel to make more money if they put out two pilot two books amazing and superior but they didn't and then they did later and uh it was past the point of expiration and then uh they canceled it and they made Doc Ock in Peter's body or in a clone Peter body uh, make a deal with Mephisto. And then in the champions, they had Miles make a deal with Mephisto. So there are at least three spider people who have all made deals with Mephisto. And then we have Spencer on the book and keep alluding to one more day to the point where like issue one, Peter and Mary Jane get back together. And you're like, wait, what? Mephisto. So this book reveals that Norman Osborn made a deal with Mephisto. Okay, I really am glad that it's that and not what my brain was. I was like, it's Aunt May. Aunt May made a deal with Mephisto. And she she sold Uncle Ben's soul. And that's why Uncle to, Ben got killed. To save Peter. Yeah. 
Ben Riley also made a deal with Mephisto. No, I, I thought it was going to be he made she made a deal with Mephisto. He came to her after as like she was saved from the precipice of death. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He came to her and then he made a double deal. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. no ben I'm Riley glad. also made a deal. I'm sorry, okay. but uh, lots of folk made made some deals. Yeah. So uh, Osborne's life is falling apart. Mephisto goes to him. This is early on, uh, and uh, when, you know before he even meets Peter Parker, mm -hmm. and uh, so he makes a deal and he pledges Harry's soul in exchange for everything. Okay. And uh, that, He's, what does he care about him? Right. And maybe he got the goblin idea from Mephisto <laughs> so that the whole thing is Mephisto. Like the whole, the whole relationship of Peter and Norman and Harry and the goblin. That's all inspired by Mephisto. So, <sighs> That maybe Norman had became like an agent of Mephisto, unbeknownst to himself. Uh, but then Harry died, and then he came back, and he has, uh, you know, torment, and he's tormenting Norman, and he's tormenting Peter. And Nick Spencer wants you to know that he read J.M.D. Mateus comics, which, like, me too, man, I know. And because uh, he keeps referring to this moment at the end of this awful arc called Pursuit where uh, Harry like recorded a video of himself being like, I made artificial life forms for your parents and I gotcha, gotcha. Cause he did also another book like before that. Uh -huh. um, the gotcha thing came from uh, this molten man life story. doesn't matter. Yeah. But uh, it's weird because like they keep making references to books, but then like getting the details wrong. So it's like, it's like heavily relying on like D Mateus spectacular 200, but then forgets that he died on a gurney outside the like, car the, uh -huh. the ambulance but like you see him in the ambulance or in a hospital or on a bed and i'm like it wasn't on a bed it's a gurney and like with legacy of evil you know they keep referencing this book called like called spider-man legacy of evil which is like who gives a shit okay it's like a book that like four people read 25 years ago and it is the impetus behind this whole issue that like there's a secret lab that like <sighs> the, the thing everybody's talking about is that the reason why Harry is kindred or maybe he isn't because he's, there's going to be another reveal at the end where mm -hmm. he's like, ah, it's not me. Cause like there's a Harry body in the morgue and Harry is alive with Carly Cooper. And so there's at least two Harry's running around. Okay. One of whom is a corpse and kindred who was revealed to be Harry. Right. But maybe he isn't because he also revealed that like Harry or kindred used chameleon and Harry used chameleon in the pursuit arc 25 years ago. So like, maybe that's also a thing. So like, we had this big reveal of who Kindred was, but now we're going to get a double reveal because maybe Kindred isn't Harry after all. You were very sure it was him. I was. and Well, I, I was right. <laughs> I was sure he was him before it was even a thing. And then they revealed it was him, but mm -hmm. now maybe not. And I'm happy to be wrong because who gives a shit? It's uh -huh. comic books. But like, we'll see what the big reveal is. I will say that like, when I read this issue, I was kind of on pins and needles. I'm like, wow, what's happening? Like really like breakneck speed. A lot of stuff is, is going on here. Uh -huh. The issues are that Spencer's leaving the book and all he ever did was house cleaning, but not even really smooth house cleaning. Like it's like hiring cleaners to come in and take care of your house. But like they broke shit while they were cleaning your house and they're like, I'll fix that too. And then they do fix it. Uh -huh. But like you broke my chair, you smashed a window, you know, you're, you're careless. And that's what this whole thing is. It's just, it's a really like weird, deliberate, asked for, necessary, careless retcon. And his whole run will have just been retcons. And he needed to make more retcons to achieve his retcons. And I, I don't know if like that's strong. Like it's not a very, it's not a very like strong story at the end of the day we read these things for story and we read these things to be entertained and to add to the ongoing saga of these soap operas that we read between pages mm -hmm. and this is not a story it's a retcon like it's work it's legwork it's mm -hmm. and it's all legwork mm -hmm. and it's like there's he he indulges in a few cheat days but for the most part it's all exercise and it's not unnecessary we, I think we need to get back to where we were. I think we need to fix the things that have been broken in Spider-Man, but he keeps making these weird changes. And he, and I, I think it's just because he doesn't know how to do it. Like, or he doesn't know how to do it better. You know, mm. he's just doing it to get it done. 
as opposed to doing it because he has this story in his heart and he's using it as an opportunity to also fix things. Like I've seen clever retconning. I've mm -hmm. seen deliberate organic retconning where it's like, I am fixing this or right. making you think you're reading a story. And then Holy shit. At the end of it, it also fixes this. That's not what this is. It's just work. But I enjoyed this issue but I also wonder about the implications because do I like the idea of Mephisto and Spider-Man at all? No. Do I like the idea of, no, oh, I dropped my remote control for the TV behind me. Oh no. It made a noise. So I have to identify it. I know. So do I like any of that? Not really, but is the idea that the goblin inspired by Mephisto kind of interesting? I'll grant you it's like maybe 8% interesting. Like there is a, there is a germ of an interesting idea there. Mm -hmm. And that like the, the, it, I think if I'm, if, if I'm reading this right, that he's going to undo the one more day thing. Like he's going to unmake one more day. I think at the end of this, he's, that's the, ret, that's the big retcon. And he needs to justify it by making other retcons. And he's fixing it by being like, the reason why Mephisto even went to Spider-Man in the first place was because there's a there's a there's a continuity a of precedent. there's a precedent of Mephisto's interference mm. and that the whole damn thing is predicated on like the death of Harry Osborn or something and it's like okay well i would i would honestly say that Mephisto's interference is predicated on his desire to make deals and we've already seen that with other characters and maybe sure. it wasn't present in the Spider-Man books but like that's what Mephisto does baby yeah in these spider-man <laughs> books but like for the most part he's like you know he's either Just a fly trap guy. with big boobs or he's a or he's a demon right. imposter imposter who collects souls you know like i don't know it's silly mephisto is a dumb character like <laughs> i don't really care about mephisto and every time everyone's like oh mephisto i'm like yeah who needs him i, I guess ghost rider yeah <laughs> that's who needs him he's in every book but ghost rider well, it's because you would need a book. Yeah, well, Ghost Rider would have to be interesting. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. It's I'm fascinated at this point. It, literally at this point, like I know a lot of people are like, what the fuck? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Like I've been crapping on this book a lot. And the reason though is because it hasn't been engaging. And now it kind of is <laughs> like, I'm like, oh my God, like, what are you doing? But it's not quite a train wreck. I'm kind of, it's like a train wreck, but like with models. So I'm just enjoying the craftsmanship going into the train wreck. Sure. You know, it's like watching those videos, of those people who make that like big Rubik's cube thing and then mm -hmm. watching it just explode. And I'm like, wow, that's a lot of time you put into that wreck. Um, I'm, I'm genuinely fascinated when he's like pulling the mask off. I'm like, who is it? <laughs> like, what are you going to do? Because most of the time, like all my whinging about Spider-Man over the last 10 years have been like, you don't even know what the hell you're doing. Like, you don't even know what happened. You didn't read the book. This guy read those books. He read the books I'm reading. So like, what's he going to do? Is it Judas Traveler? Like, what's going to happen? And so I'm on the edge of my seat with this book. I can't wait for Sinister Ward. It's two days away. And I'm like, what's going to happen? Because like the slap fight with everybody, like I, who cares? It doesn't matter. I think what I like about this book is how you're engaged with it. I'm, I'm engaged. I'm going to say excited and I'm not going to say loving it. I'm going to say engaged. You're engaged with this story. I am story. engaged in the story. And regardless of how people feel about this book, I think this is going to be one of those books that time will tell. Oh, and time I, and, will. And I don't mean like just the ending. I mean like a year out. Yeah. Time will tell. Time is going to be very harsh to this book. Or not. No, it will. You think? I can already tell you. Okay. This book will be forgotten like there will be this people will be like remember that time that nick spencer tried to fix spider-man and he spent his entire run doing that mm -hmm. and also he put like i don't know and also he did boomerang stuff you know like there's not enough like what about gog like mm -hmm. he's gonna leave before any of that's paid off like i don't remember what the hell even happened to gog but like it's just who who asked the time is not gonna be kind of this book no okay it's gonna be one of those things where it's like oh yeah then that happened so, you don't have to worry you don't have to read that so do you have a theory do you have any ideas or but who kindred so, is yeah like... I, I it could be anybody it could be uncle ben it could be aunt may it could be harry osborne again and it's just a fake out it it, it could be it could be judas traveler or a scryer or or norman again or uh or or, or miles warren or something like i i don't i don't know okay 
I'm gonna I'm gonna say something. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna like I'm, I always try to come up with a thing. I hope it's not. Yeah. So not so that it happens, but so that like you have like some perspective on mm-hmm. like what it could be. Right. What if it's not a person? What if it's all the things lost? Yeah. That's why it's we. Right. Right. Yeah. It's all we are kindred. We're the things that we lost. That we yeah. The the, the spaces in between. Well, no, I'm thinking like it's the marriage. Right. It's the soul of Harry Osborne. Yeah. That's it's your identity. It was him. Yeah. No, it's true. I always it's said it Miles's was Miles's. Yeah. Deal. It's Miles's deal. It's, it's all the deals. Yeah. All the it's deals just, just made manifest. Yeah. I always said it was the soul. Originally, I said, well, originally I was like, no, all the Harrys that have been here were clones, mm. and that Harry really did die. And this is the first time Harry's ever been back. Right. So it could be that that's the reveal. And that's why there's so many Harry's running around. Mm-hmm. But like, you know, it, it, it could be anything. It, it could be, um, I, I had a theory. Oh, it could be Gabriel, his uh, Norman and Gwen's son, the Grey Goblin, because that would suck. Mm-hmm. It could be Sarah Stacy, his daughter. To end, to undo since past. Yeah. I don't know. I see people putting in the chat something I thought immediately when yeah. you're telling me this, and I hope it's not that because it doesn't. I hate it. Make sense? No, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, mm, like that was the first thing I was like, oh, it's going to be that. That's I, I hate oh, that. I hope he's not that cheap. Is that uh, is that the Go ahead? Oh, that it's Mary Jane. Oh, I hate that. I'm like so much. no, but that was like literally like as I was staring at the panel. But then it's the we thing. Yeah. It very specifically says we, mm-hmm. who we are yeah. in that page you were just looking at. Right, right. I feel like that we plays into, it comes into play here. It's It, it may not just be one character. Right. That's fine with me. But it's, uh, it, it's quite awful. I mean, like, it, it's weird. It's not, it's not awful. It's just like, it's just very bizarre. It's very bizarre. It's yes. super bizarre. I don't even know what to even think about it. It's just like, <laughs> but I can't wait to see it. You know, and that's the thing is like, that's the mark, I guess, of a good thing. Yeah, but like, that's, yeah, that's what, like, it's, maybe it's not good. Right, but it is but engaging. It is successful. Is it's it? What it's attempting to do. Oh, it's yeah. It's got you on the edge of your seat. I do. Yeah, but it took like a dozen issues to get there or right? more. Uh, uh, Jay says, Kindred, confess, Peter. Oh, look at Mephisto Jr. You're going to cry? Nice reference to Bully Parker. Uh, Silvery Cricket, <laughs> Sal and Spider-Man. Just how many clowns are in this car? It's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> it's very true. Uh, Wilbert Robinson, uh, any chance of Heroes Are Born on Back issues? A big chance since I own it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 they might not have been here. That was earlier. No, that's that true. Yeah, we are gonna, yeah, we're going to do it. I promise. Uh, and Dower Wald, I'll make, I'd make a deal with Mephisto for that lost Star Wars Infinities episode. Well, you can watch. Well, no, because that episode did so friggin' bad. I'm never going to release any more of that. That's over. That's over. We'll never do any more of that. I'm sorry. We'll. I'll just. I'll just tell you what happens in the third one. But like, we can't. I can't waste time with that. If you guys aren't gonna watch it, I'm not gonna fucking make it. Sorry. <laughs> We're like getting uncut salad today. I'm sorry. I wasn't even expecting this. Let's uh. Let's talk about some books that are coming out this week. <laughs> right. Yes. What do we got? Oh, I'm going first. Why not? I don't know. Why not? Hellions number 15 is coming out. Uh, written by Zeb Wells. Oh, which you enjoy a lot. Yeah, with art by Rohe, Ro, Roge, Antonio. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. awful. I like this book. I like this book a lot. Yeah. Since you're such a jerk. <laughs> it's just such a jerk. New Mutants number 21 is uh, coming out. Uh, I Listen, um, Gabby's dead. What, what's going on? Oh. I know. Also, there apparently there's something on the moon. <gasps> yeah, a lot. <laughs> there's something creeping around in the shadows of the Summer's house, so it says. Oh, is it uh, Summoner? Solemn? Solemn? That's probably a... not. I think it's rain because rain. Something, something's going on with rain. Yeah. Uh, written by Vita Ayala with art by Rod Rice. Yay! Hooray, he's back. Uh, Demon Days Cursed Web Number One is coming out. Yeah. Which I'm like, wait, which one is this? I think yes, we're good. Yeah, written, drawn, everything by Peach Momoko. Yay! I, I love the look of these books. So I know. I'm definitely picking that one up. Uh, Wonder Girl number three is coming out. Uh, written and drawn by Joelle Jones. Yay! I think it's just her this time. Hooray! Sweet. Hooray! Yeah. Love the look of this book. Dig this story. Listen, I don't care if Joelle needs more time. Take the time, Take you, the time need. you need. I don't care because nobody's Take dropping time. the book. Uh, like you put it out, I'm going to pick it up. That's the thing. You you putting it down? I'm picking it right up. Damn right. It's happening. You can go ahead and do this one. Oh, Dark Ages number one is coming out from Tom Taylor and Ebon Coyello. Yay! 
I can't wait for this. This is what the watcher has been waiting for. That's what the first line of this. This is says. what the watcher has been waiting for. What the hell's even mean? I can't wait for this book. It looks insane. Uh, we've been teased it for over a year, I think, uh, and I can't wait. I'm very excited about it. Uh, Infinite Frontier number five from Josh Williamson and Paul Pelletier is coming out. Uh, this is the penultimate or ultimate. I don't remember. I think it's like either one. It's five or six. Okay. So there you go. One more issue left for, until we penultimate. move from Infinite Frontier to the next thing in mm -hmm. terms of events. Uh, but or, or set up for the thing. But mm -hmm. uh, I'm digging it. And uh, the last issue I was like, eh, but like it's 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 another one of those books that's like doing the heavy lifting yeah but the thing is it has the good sense to be in its own book yeah to do all that that's true and sinister war number four is coming out from nick spencer and ed brisson with pencils by dion Genis uh neves i'm sorry i don't know uh there's a bunch of artists actually on this book uh and yeah i'm excited well, to Bagley's see on it too i know i know so we'll see what he does oh boy I can't wait for this ridiculous book. It feels like every cover of this has been a Brian Hitch, everybody punching Spider-Man from off panel, like cover, but whatever. It's like, let's see where it goes. Spider-Man's army of darkness. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is, are there any more books? Is that, is that it? I feel like we've done them all. Well, I think we did. I'm sure we missed something. I know we forgot a few, but like, we not forgot them, but we didn't, we didn't get a chance to read them. No. And it's also, we're coming up on two hours. Yeah, so we gotta go. We gotta go. And so do you. I understand, but uh, we really, really appreciate you guys we appreciate hanging out with being us. Being here with us—that's right. For and, sure. And thank you for putting up with uh, with my nonsense. And uh, we really appreciate it. If you want to help us out, subscribe. Click the subscribe button in the chat right now and uh, join us every week here on Comic Pop Returns. And of course, don't forget to go over to youtubecom slash pop and subscribe over there. Get us to 100,000 subs over there and watch back issues. I guess. Uh, as well as going over to twitch.tv slash comic pop, watch Tiffany play video games. It's a lot of fun. It's a really nice community she's built over there. And if you want to help us out even further, of course, don't forget to give this video a like. It always helps us out. And we will see you guys next time with an all new episode of Off the Rack. I am Sal. Hi, Tiffany. So long, everybody. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.